T-Rex ruled an isolated island for decades in the Jurassic World movies. But could this genetic experiment actually survive in the real Cretaceous period of history? Well, we're gonna find out. This six-limbed monster was engineered to be the ultimate disaster predator. The scientists who created it gave it extra limbs for power, increased size for dominance, and aggression instincts for hunting. But natural selection doesn't care about human engineering. The Hell Creek Formation 66 million years ago was home to the most dangerous predators in Earth's history. And this creature has some serious problems. By the end of this video, you'll know exactly whether this experiment could make it past its first year in the wild. So six limbs sounds powerful until you watch this thing try to move. Picture this. You're a D-Rex trying to take your first few steps. You've got four massive limbs and two tiny leftover T-Rex arms. Your body weighs twice as much as a regular T-Rex and your spine is bent into this weird hunch that makes you look like you're permanently looking for loose change. Now, try to walk. Each step requires you to figure out which of your six limbs goes where. Your brain is working overtime just to not fall over. Meanwhile, every other dinosaur in Hell Creek is running around on two legs or four legs, setups that actually work. You're stuck trying to coordinate six limbs while your massive head wobbles around on a neck that was never meant to support it. The energy cost would be insane. A regular T-Rex can walk for miles without breaking a sweat. You burn through calories just standing still. Your body is constantly calculating which limb to move next while fighting gravity. It's exhausting. But here's where it gets worse. That hunched posture everyone thinks makes you look scary, it's destroying your spine. Every vertebrae in your back is being crushed by weight it was never designed to handle. Your spine was built to be a straight line from your head to your tail. Now it's bent into this C shape that puts pressure on every single joint. The pain would be constant. Sharp shooting pains down your back, aching in your shoulders. Your neck feels like someone's twisting it with pliers, and this is just from existing. You haven't even tried to hunt anything yet. Your four big limbs aren't helping either. They look strong, but they're not built for holding up a multi-ton body. The wrists keep buckling, the elbows lock up. You're basically doing a permanent push-up with arms that want to give out. One wrong step and you're face first in the dirt with a dislocated shoulder. And speed? Forget about it. A healthy T-Rex can hit 15 miles per hour when it needs you. You max out at maybe like three miles per hour on a good day. A human could run away from you. A Triceratops could literally walk backwards and stay ahead of you. Your turning radius is also a joke. Wanna look left? Hope you've got five minutes to spare. Other dinosaurs can pivot and react in seconds. You have to plan your turns like you're driving a semi-truck through a parking lot. And the worst part, you can't even lie down properly. Your weird body shape means you're always uncomfortable. Sleep is impossible, rest is impossible. You're trapped in a body that hurts to use and hurts to not use. Every movement is a negotiation between six limbs that don't wanna work together. Every step is a small victory against your own biology. And every day you're getting weaker because just existing is burning through your energy reserves. Movement problems are bad enough when you're alone on an island. In Hell Creek, being slow means being dead. But too bad for you, Hell Creek isn't empty. If a T-Rex had a 50% hunting success rate, you'd be lucky to hit 5%. Let's talk about your first meeting with an actual T-Rex. You're both after the same dead Triceratops. You think you're scary because you're bigger. The T-Rex thinks you're dinner because you're slower. This isn't even close to fair. A T-Rex can bite down with 12,800 pounds of force, but you've got maybe half that because your jaw is all wrong. A T-Rex has really good vision, great hearing, and can smell a carcass from miles away. You are probably getting distracted by shiny rocks. The T-Rex circles you once. You try to turn to follow it, but by the time you've rotated 90 degrees, it's already behind you again. You're playing a game where the other player is three times faster and you can't even see the board. When the T-Rex attacks, it goes for your neck. You swing one of your forearms at it. Miss completely. Your arm gets stuck in a tree branch. The T-Rex bites down on your shoulder and shakes you around until something breaks. You retreat, bleeding while the T-Rex enjoys its meal. That's a good day for you. On bad days, you meet a pack of Dakota Raptors. These are 18 foot long killing machines with sickle claws. They hunt in groups of five to six. They're fast, smart, and know exactly how to take down something big and clumsy. They don't attack you head on, they surround you. One distracts you from the front while the others slash at your legs from behind. You try to swipe at one and miss. Another one jumps on your back. You can't reach it because your arms don't bend that way. They don't need to kill you quickly. 
They just need to make you bleed. Slash after slash, cut after cut, you're losing blood faster than you could heal. Eventually, you collapse from exhaustion. They wait for you to die, then they have their lunch. But let's say you avoid other predators. You still need to eat. Good news, there are plenty of plant eaters around. Bad news, they are all either too fast or too dangerous. Edmontosaurus can run 25 miles per hour. You can't catch them. Triceratops has three horns and doesn't mind using them. One thrust to your gut and you're done. Ankylosaurus is covered in armor and has a club tail that can shatter your legs. You're stuck trying to hunt animals that are either Olympic sprinters or walking tanks with your coordination problems and slow reflexes. You're not going to be able to catch a sick baby hadrosaur. So you become a scavenger. You wait for other predators to make kills then hope they leave scraps but you're always last of the party. By the time you waddle over, there's nothing left but bones and flies. You were designed to be an apex predator, but you're not an apex predator. You're not even a predator anymore. You're a very large, very slow garbage disposal that other dinosaurs actively avoid because you smell like failure. The competition alone would starve you to death within months, but your brain makes everything 10 times worse because you're attracted to light. In Hell Creek, this will kill you. Lightning strikes during storms, you walk towards it. Forest fires, you head straight for the flames. Moonlight reflecting off water, you stumble right into quicksand. Your brain sees something shiny and decides that's more important than staying alive. Other dinosaurs learn to avoid danger. You learn to find it. A normal predator uses stealth. You announce yourself to everything within five miles. Your massive footsteps shake the ground. Your labored breathing sounds like a broken air conditioner. You crash through bushes and knock over trees. Prey animals hear you coming from the next county over. And when you finally spot something you want to eat, you immediately lose interest because a dewdrop on a leaf caught your eye. Your senses are completely backwards. Most predators have amazing vision for spotting prey. You have tunnel vision that misses everything important. Most predators can hear a twig snap from 100 yards away. You can't hear a Triceratops charging until it's already stabbing you. You can't read body language either. When another dinosaur lowers its head and spreads its stance, that means back off or I'll kill you. To you it means, I don't know, but I'll try to kill it. This gets you into fights that you can't win on a daily basis. You also can't communicate with anything. Other dinosaurs have calls, displays, and signals that mean specific things. You have nothing. You can't warn others away from your territory. You can't call for help when you're in trouble. You can't even signal that you're not a threat. Every interaction is a miscommunication that usually ends with you getting hurt. And just like in real life, your mating prospects are zero. Even if you could find another D-Rex, you wouldn't know how to court it. You don't have the right calls, the right moves, or the right instincts. You're a genetic dead end that doesn't even know it. Navigation is impossible. Other dinosaurs can find their way using landmarks, star patterns, and magnetic fields. You get lost in your own territory. You wander in circles for days trying to find the water hole you visited yesterday. And the light attraction means you're predictable. And your decision making is broken. Thirsty? Drink from a stagnant pool full of bacteria instead of a clean stream. Hungry? Attack the armored dinosaur instead of the sick one. Tired? Sleep in the open instead of finding shelter. Every choice you make is wrong. Every instinct you have leads to disaster. Your brain is actively working against your survival. The hardware is broken but the software is somehow worse. And all while your brain sabotages you, your body is actively dying because chronic pain changes how you think about everything. Right now, your spine feels like someone's hammering nails into it. Your joints ache constantly. Your muscles cramp from trying to hold up a body that's too heavy for its own frame. This isn't just uncomfortable, it's rewiring your brain. Pain makes you avoid movement. Movement is how you hunt, escape, and survive. So you stop trying to do any of those things. You just stand there hurting while the world happens around you. Normal animals push through minor discomfort to stay alive. You shut down completely at the first sign of stress. A small cut becomes a reason to give up hunting for days. A sore leg becomes an excuse to ignore predators approaching. If you didn't know it, there is no pain medication in the Cretaceous, especially for dinosaurs. But you're stuck dealing with agony every single day. And your heart is working overtime trying to pump blood through a body twice the size it was designed for. It's basically a Honda Civic engine trying to power a semi-truck. The strain is constant and heart attacks are just inevitable. Your lungs can't keep up either. The weird chest shape from your deformed ribcage means you can't breathe properly. You're always slightly suffocating. Try running away when you can't get enough oxygen. Try fighting when you're dizzy from lack of air. Your liver is also failing because it can't process the toxins from your oversized body. Your kidneys are backing up because they can't filter waste fast enough. 
your digestive system is shutting down because your stomach acid can't handle the massive amount of food you need to eat. These aren't future problems either. They're happening right now and getting worse every day. The immune system situation is probably the most pathetic part. You have zero resistance to Cretaceous diseases. A mosquito bite could kill you. A drink from a puddle could be fatal. A small scratch could turn into bone infection. And if you think I am crazy thinking this, look at the most recent Jurassic World movie. The biggest plot point in that movie is that all the dinosaurs are dying from disease, not enough heat and not enough oxygen. If you took the D-Rex that lived in today's age in that world and put it in the Cretaceous, it would not have the immune system to deal with that because other dinosaurs evolved alongside these germs for millions of years. Their immune systems know how to fight them. Your immune system has never seen anything from this time period. It's completely unprepared. Every bacteria, virus, and parasite in Hell Creek looks at you and sees an all-you-can-eat buffet. You're walking around with a compromised immune system in one of the most hostile environments in Earth's history. Your growth hormone problems mean you're still growing even as an adult. Your bones are getting longer, but not stronger. Your organs are getting bigger, but not better. Your body is basically a tumor that gained consciousness. This uncontrolled growth uses up massive amounts of energy, which is energy that you don't have because you can't hunt effectively. So you're starving while at the same time growing it's medically impossible to sustain. So cancer is guaranteed. When your entire body is built on uncontrolled cell growth, cancer isn't a possibility, it's a certainty. Multiple aggressive tumors, probably within the first year. Your body isn't just broken, it's actively working against itself at every level because the real enemy was inside you all along. Now, watch how these problems feed off of each other because week one, you can't catch anything because you're too slow and clumsy. And week two, you're starving, which makes you weaker and even slower. Week three, desperation drives you to attack a young Triceratops. You get a horn through your shoulder. Week four, the wound gets infected because your immune system can't handle Cretaceous bacteria. Week five, Infection spreads to your bloodstream. Now you're weak, slow, hungry, and dying from sepsis. This is how it works. Each problem creates the next one. There's no recovery period, no time to heal, no chance to get stronger. The chronic pain from your broken spine makes you avoid movement. Less movement means weaker muscles. Weaker muscles means you fall down more often. More falls means more injuries. More injuries means more infections. More infections means more pain. You're trapped in a cycle that only goes one direction down and within three months you're a shadow of what you were not that you were much to begin with the final stage is predictable you're too weak to hunt too injured to fight and too sick to heal and too tired to run you find yourself stuck in deep mud attracted by moonlight reflecting off the water and you don't have the strength to pull yourself out your massive body designed to be the ultimate predator becomes your own grave that extra weight that was supposed to make you powerful now drags you down into the muck this isn't bad luck. This is inevitable biology playing out exactly as it has to. So could it survive? Not a chance. The answer is no, absolutely not a 0% chance. The T-Rex ruled for 2 million years. Triceratops dominated for 3 million years. Ankylosaurus lasted 4 million years. These weren't accidents. They were successful because they worked. The T-Rex doesn't work at all in any way. Successful predators are efficient. They use minimal energy to get maximum results. This thing burns through calories just standing up. It's a biological equivalent of a car that gets negative miles per gallon. Successful predators are fast enough to catch prey or strong enough to overpower it. This thing is too slow to catch anything and too clumsy to fight anything. It's neither fast nor strong. It's just big and useless. Successful predators have senses that help them hunt. This thing has senses that actively sabotage it. It's attracted to danger and blind to opportunity. That's not a predator. That's prey with delusions. And successful predators can heal from injuries and fight off diseases. This thing gets life-threatening infections from minor cuts. One bad day and it's dead. No comebacks, no recovery, no second chances. The math is simple. You need more energy coming in than going out. This thing uses massive amounts of energy and catches almost nothing. That's not sustainable for weeks, let alone years. At the end of the day, nature doesn't care how scary you look. Nature cares how well you function. This thing functions like a broken toaster. The D-Rex wouldn't just fail in the Cretaceous. It would fail spectacularly, quickly, and permanently. It's not built for survival. It's built for extinction. Because at the end of the day, it is a mistake. Could it survive? The question isn't whether it could survive. The question is how long it would take to die. 
And the answer is not long. If you enjoyed watching this video, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel and comment down below what other dinosaurs you want to see me talk about in the future. And if you want to watch another one of our videos, click the video on screen now.